Greetings, Boo Believers. Hi, guys. Welcome to Deadsville Horror Talk Special Edition. Uh, I got to turn the volume down on my phone. At least I know the volume's working out there for you guys. So my fuck up actually pays off. So I don't have to ask you guys if you can hear us. I know you can, because I'm an idiot and didn't turn my phone down. Woo! So, yes, I'm your idiot host, Ronan James of Deadsville Horror Talk and Deadsville Daily Booze. And I'm a fucking stuntman and director, writer. Wait do you see what I have next. It's a little something, a little fake commercial. Y'all gonna love it. Fucking hilarious. You guys, yeah, you guys are gonna love this. <laughs> it's gonna be so, amazing. <laughs> so much stuff coming out. Check out the new reel that we just dropped. The uh, When you get your goth girlfriend from Timu reel. Uh, yeah, and, and, and yes, you can follow me every day, Monday through Friday. I do the Daily Booze at 5 p.m., here on my Facebook page, also on Twitch and YouTube and Kick, we are live as well. And uh, today I'm joined by the lovely Maddie Meek. <laughs> Maddie is a puppeteer, an actress, a crafter, a prop maker. Um, Do lots of stuff. <laughs> acting now as well. And, yeah, uh, we're, we're diving into acting. I've been a crafter most of my life. I. I work with all kinds of foam. I make monsters. I do all that fun stuff. <laughs> yes, very talented, as you've seen. And, and also, if you've seen, she's the puppeteer for Doggy Deviant. If you've seen, been to our live events or you've watched the trailer or any of the teasers or the music videos or anything like that, she is the uh, hand up the ass of Doggy Deviant, if you will. This hand, to be exact. Yes, so there it is. Whew. Smells. I Damn know. it, doggy, what you been eating? <laughs> the, the smell doesn't go away. It doesn't matter how much you scrub. <laughs> All right. Well, yeah, so that's a little bit about us. And uh, today's episode, we are going to review Here for Blood, a new uh, Screambox exclusive, and it's in limited theaters right now. We watched it on Screambox last night, and, uh, yeah, we're going to give you... Uh, in, in Deadsville Horror Talk tradition, we will give you our spoiler-free first take. So if you uh, haven't seen Here for Blood yet, you can stay tuned in. You don't have to worry about spoilers until we tell you to. We will tell you when we're going to dig deeper. We'll give you a big spoiler warning. So you know that that's the time to pause and go watch the movie and then come back later. And uh, if you want to join us in the chat, that is open as well. We have our few people joining us. I see TJ in the chat. And TJ just sent stars again. Thanks, TJ. 310 stars. I didn't even get a notification. Oh, it's because I turned everything down. That's right. Everything is turned down right now. Thank you, TJ. 310 stars. Mwah! Scream art from Steph Infection. Mwah! I'll do one too. <laughs> <laughs> Mwah! Scream art. <laughs> We're all doing Steph Infection impersonations here on Deadsville Horror Talk Live. <laughs> Uh, so yes, if you have Screenbox, this new movie, uh, here for blood, I, I'm pretty, I think, yeah, TJ, I think he watched it today. I think I he think said so. he watched it. Yeah. So we'll get there in a minute. Uh, real quick, make sure that you like subscribe, follow, hit the bell, all that kind of stuff. We're going to upload this episode to Spotify. So if you missed the episode or if you want to listen to the replay in your car or watch the video replay, it'll be on Spotify as well. And other uh, podcast streaming platforms, anywhere you listen to podcasts, watch your podcast, you will be able to, to, to follow, uh, and listen to this replay as well. We're going to try and do that with all the lives. So if you join in and, uh, chat and we, we talk about, uh, you know, we'll, we'll read your chats in the, in the uh during the show here and then we'll go out live on the broadcast uh, yeah talk to us guys replay so respond. tj checks in and says yes i watched it all right we're going to get tj's uh response and reaction shortly and we're gonna uh, we're gonna dig in a little deeper here though first and and talk a little bit about this movie let's get our screen share going we're now on restream so it makes this Lots of fun. I think that's the one we yeah, want Yeah, now there. I get to see you do it. Yes, this is how the magic is done. <laughs> and uh, we have phew, camera two working over <laughs> here. Maddie, a little close in camera two yeah, there. We can, we can uh, slide this this way a little bit so we get a little more Maddie in the in the frame there. There you go. <laughs> there we go. Camera two. We see Maddie in our Everyone's Godzilla. Everyone's nice and close to me now. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, uh, yes, we did call to action. In. So now we jump down our little list here and we get to it. And this is going to be all in our 
first take. So this is all spoiler free stuff uh, as we dive in. I'm going to bring our screen share up. <clears throat> oh, it's already sharing. Look at that. We are sharing. Yay. All right. So here we are. Uh, this is Rotten Tomatoes. And there's not a lot of reviews on this one yet. It's very new. It's a bit of an indie. Um, it's definitely a low budget. I would indie. say so. Yeah. So uh, it hasn't really. The audience score is fewer than fifty ratings, so there is no audience score yet. The critics' uh, tomatometer eight reviews gave it eighty-eight percent, which uh, that's pretty good. Yeah, it's pretty good. Um, I'm I'm a little surprised actually. I thought critics would not have liked this yeah, one. Yeah, I I thought critics would like pick it apart. Yeah, I figured they wouldn't like. We this. were picking some things apart. There is yeah, there was a lot. Of, there, there was stuff like uh, yeah. I'm just to, just a quick. We we both really enjoyed the movie. Oh, absolutely. It was a, it was, it was we cool. both. Yeah, it was a fun movie, but there, it's not without its problems, and we're going to get into it. Um, but yeah, I thought the critics would have been harsher on this one, but I guess they, they kind of. They usually are. When oh you yeah, yeah. With like a good movie, they'll they'll just tear it to pieces. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> so I, I'm very surprised at 88. <laughs> percent Yeah, I agree. I agree. So uh, yeah, 88 percent fresh on the uh, tomatometer. And did anybody write a review? Yeah, here we go. <clears throat> All right. So here's a couple of reviews that we're going to write, and, and and I tend to agree with some of these. So this is Richard Klein, Shadows on the Wall. He says, the filmmaking may be somewhat cheap and cheerful and the supernatural story elements unnecessarily over-egged, but the movie is also boldly inventive and riotously funny. And uh, yeah, it's pretty good. That's a good summation. Next one, Michael Talbot Haynes says, Here for Blood may possibly be the best horror comedy wrestling movie done yet. It's a heart-pounding roundhouse punch of a good time. Nine out of ten. Lindsay Traves from The Daily Dead. Maybe you won't be submitting this silly horror comedy for awards contention, but when you're done, you might have to fight the urge to stand up on a folding chair, wave a Canadian flag, and yell, hell yeah, brother. <laughs> so, uh, And one more we'll read. Here for Blood will likely appeal to fans of Terrifier, the WWE, the Evil Dead, and most camp bloodthirsty slashers. At no point does it reinvent the wheel, but what it does do is make for an entertaining albeit slightly saggy tornado of violence uh yeah and and they're all pretty spot on now i'm gonna read one of these negative ones gets so mucked up in particulars and exposition that it loses track of the momentum and drags for the final 15 minutes and that one's from cinema crazed and there were a couple more good ones here uh positive ones but but i i can totally see where that one comes uh is coming from yeah yeah i see that too i know exactly what they're talking about there's a lot of exposition there's a lot of talking because you have this whole supernatural element and um right they're trying to give you some backstory yeah and 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 that was one of my issues with the movie is the uh the pacing and um and well yeah we'll get into it more but i think the editing i think it it this movie really uh, suffers from, a, a, I don't want to say a bad edit, but it's not a very tight edit, I feel like. I feel like there was a lot of times where they should have cut out of shots sooner, cut to other people's reactions in different places sooner, and kind of, yeah. they left stuff hanging a little too long, way too much, I felt like, which made the pacing a little bit off and made it kind of drag in spots. I think with a tighter edit, uh, this movie snaps a little quicker and everything kind of hits a little, uh, a little faster and you're not left waiting for stuff. I feel like I was waiting a lot. I felt that too, especially in the beginning, I would say. Yeah. Like that was where it really dragged. But no, that's interesting that you mentioned the editing because when I think of pacing, I'm thinking of writing, not really like the way that it's filmed. So the fact that you bring up um, the editing and how things lingered, like scenes would linger longer mm -hmm. than they should have. I, I'm actually like thinking back and noticing that, yeah, you're right. Yeah. Like some scenes could have been cut so much shorter and that, probably was a huge issue with the pacing yeah that's what that I think in itself it, it, it definitely slows the movie down a bit and especially in certain parts there are parts where and, and it seemed like uh the transitions between acts like the first i mean we can get into it. this is our first take so we'll uh let's get to the synopsis first because we're, we're kind of digging in here a little more so we're going <laughs> to read our synopsis <laughs> yeah there is a bunch to talk about here and you guys feel free to jump in too um <clears throat> So I'm going to read the synopsis here, and this is a 2022 movie because uh, I guess it hit film festivals and stuff like that in 2022, and it's won awards. It, it won a couple awards in festivals, but it did not release until this year, so it's technically 
it, it didn't have a widespread release until 2024. So uh, it's a two hours. Did, did it, was it really was it two, really hours? two hours? Wow, I guess that's it why it felt shorter. like it. It did feel shorter, but it still felt like it dragged a bit. It, yeah, like it so, felt like a short movie, but like it was really dragged along. Yeah, there was parts where I was just like, man, they could have moved through that a little quicker. I was falling um, asleep at some point. <laughs> like I, I think, like my memory only has like certain scenes of this movie. <laughs> yeah, well, mine. I, I rewatched some of it today. We also ate a couple edibles last night. Yeah, I too, which... <laughs> was on another planet last night. <laughs> Probably throw that in there. But uh, all right, so here's the summary: When his girlfriend Phoebe is swamped with college exams, Tom O'Bannon, a rowdy pro wrestler struggling to make ends meet, agrees to fill in as a last-minute replacement for her well-paying babysitting job. Tom arrives in an isolated family home where he meets the precocious 10-year-old Grace. What starts off as a quiet night of pizza and video games quickly spirals into bloody, violent chaos as Tom and Grace find themselves fighting for their lives when an otherworldly cult of masked intruders descend on the home. Okay, that's jogging my memory a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Oh yes. yeah, I remember that part now, kind of. So yeah, there's a lot going on in this movie. This movie tackles a lot, not to you know, wrestling and uh, you know puns unintentional, um, but it definitely aims to tackle a lot. And we uh, we get the wrestling um, at the very beginning. Let's jump here. Well, let's, you know, we can watch the trailer too. We'll, we'll let everybody watch the trailer as well. But we, we you know, we, we get the wrestling. We get the backstory on this guy. He's a wrestler. Uh, we get this, well, it starts off with the, with like a serial killer. And mm -hmm. like, and we kind of get the, like, a first glimpse at one of the killers. So they start with like a nice opening gotcha moment um, where we see one of the killers in action. Totally unrelated to anything else, though, that's going on in the yeah, movie. I don't really remember that too well. No, it's just a very quick thing at the very was beginning. It, was it really quick? Like, did they kill somebody? Yeah, yeah, it was really quick. Um, I and think then I they, remember, like, we don't want to give it away, but yeah, it was a quick little something at the beginning. Yeah. Uh, but then they get to kind of like setting up the college girl and her friends. And that conversation was really long and drawn out, I felt like. And then, uh, and then we we kind of see Tom and the wrestling thing, and that was fun because because uh, the dude could legit wrestle. I mean, he actually you know I've seen, I'm watching. He, he these, did some really cool. Yeah, moves. yeah, there was some good moves in there. The dude can legit wrestle. Um, yeah, it was really cool. And uh, let's see. So then uh, it, it takes a little bit before we get to the actual babysitting and and that whole thing. And then there were some fun moments. The dialogue is pretty good in this. The writing and the dialogue is pretty good. I thought so too, um, especially like. In a comedy kind of way, like some yeah. of, like the one liners were some really, of the one liners really, are really, really, good. really funny. And the acting is not going to win any awards, but for what it no. is, it's a very like eighties nineties throwback, uh, fun movie. A lot of practical stuff in here. Um, yeah, and 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 it, it's uh, the action's pretty good. I, and I and I will I say so too, too that the fighting the, was really good. Yeah, yeah, the stunts were pretty good. They, they they could have been edited. There were certain parts that could have been edited better too. There were certain things that I was just like. Yeah, that doesn't read as great. That that one wasn't as good. I mean, because I obviously, being a stunt person, fight choreography is my thing, and I've done a lot of it, and nothing can mess up a good fight that you choreograph like a bad edit. And not that there were some bad edits, but I felt like they were, again, long. There was too much. They were showing too they much showing when they should have. Like the human eye can capture and, and the mind can register it you know, really quick. You don't need really to show quick. a whole lot. So like, there were times where I felt like they just they showed too much even in the fight scenes I, I felt like the whole the entirety of the edit could have been tighter so uh i'm gonna check uh real quick here because tj's checking in he says yes i watch it it was fun for a one watch not going to be a go-to horror movie to watch in the future for me and then he said i can't hear anything never mind sounds back all right cool yeah i agree i, I mean i i like this as well and and it was fun fun uh like first watch kind of deal let's get to our trailer here and we'll give that a look I'll probably jog your memory more too. Yeah, that'll help. Like. <laughs> I remember liking it. Mm -hmm. Come on, Phoebe. I don't know how to take care of children. Okay, it's good. Just take a couple of hours. It's really not that hard. Let's start over. The sound was down. I need you to baby Stephanie's. I need you what? Take care of children. All he has to do is just keep the kid alive for a couple of hours. It's really not that hard. <laughs> <laughs> 
Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, that definitely jogs my memory more. Yeah, me that helped a lot. <laughs> they showed a lot of good stuff in the trailer. They too. Did. I'm surprised they showed that much. Yeah, yeah, they did show a good amount of it in the trailer there. All right, so let's get to the writer and director. James Roberts is the writer, and uh, I'll check and see what else he wrote real quick. The writing is pretty good. Like I said, I just feel like the pacing's off more because of the editing than than the writing being uh, um, being. Dad, uh, he's written one thing. This is it. Oh, wow. <laughs> this guy has written one thing. There you go. He's the writer for Here for Blood, James Roberts. That's it. <clears throat> yep. Nothing and else. Uh, Daniel Turris, the director. What has Daniel done? <clears throat> All right. So he has done four uh, films here Fresh Meat, Terry's Car Gets Stolen, Enchanted Mafia miniseries, and uh, Here for Blood. So, Interesting. Yeah, very relatively new team. Writer director well, considering team. Considering that they're new, I'm I'm pretty impressed. <laughs> yeah, like I, I mean, the concept was good, and they really like again. There's a lot going on here. You've got the pro wrestling. You've got the kind of home aloneness of the invasion oh, totally, with the kid. Very so there's a lot of home alone vibes there. Um, it's a slasher because you. I mean, you see him with the axe. There's blood everywhere. There's a ton of like slasher vibes to it, but it's oh, also absolutely. like a a supernatural horror too because this yeah. whole thing is like a cult and there's like a whole uh supernatural aspect to it and right. kind of kind of dive into it but i i was kind of lost with it. well that's what happened too they get so much into the exposition of it that i, I think a, like with this kind of movie you just don't care about that stuff i think you're just like all right come on man we get it get back to the fun stuff we you know right it felt like blah 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 you're in the written. cult <laughs> Yeah, they had this whole big thing, and they're but just like... I, I felt like they didn't really give us as much info as they could have about the cult. Like, a lot of it was kind of visual. You're kind of figuring it out on your own. Well, I mean, the one thing they talk about... Well, yeah, we don't want to get into... To, yeah, I don't want to spoil it. Yeah, we so don't want to go too that. far. Well, not yet. <laughs> we'll get there. But they... I mean, they give a little bit about the cult, and they talk about it. But that's the problem, is they talked about it, and then they would talk about it, and there would be a lot of gaps in between when people were talking, and they're like... All right, waiting for somebody to say something now. Okay, now they're saying something. <laughs> uh, now they're done, but we're still on them for some reason. And like, there's no J cuts. There's no, um, uh, you know, like over the shoulder. Uh, cut. Like there, there was a lot of. I felt um, like there was like a couple scenes with like an over over the shoulder kind of shot. But there were there were like, those shots, was, but it was very little. Like it was a couple, and that was right. It. Right. It was always just. It was almost like a, a lot of straightforward, just like we're going to be on this person when they're saying their dialogue. And then we're going to yeah. cut to this person when they're saying their dialogue. But then they just left these, these like, it was almost like it was a, a newer uh, editor and he was afraid to trim too much mm. off of the shots, off of the fucking away, things. Yeah. yeah. So he just left little bits of extra and they're just sitting there and you get, I like, I feel bad for the actors sometimes because you're like, cause that's when you feel like they're acting. You can tell they're acting is when, uh, when it hangs too long and you can tell that he's the actor's sitting there waiting for the next line or he's like, all right, call cut motherfucker. Call cut. <laughs> like if you watch that Danzig movie, that I was like, that. Oh God, don't, <laughs> don't watch it. The, the tit eyes alone will, will ruin you for movies forever. But he hangs so long that his editor just has no concept oh, of God. where the, where to fucking cut between like from between dialogue and all that. There's just like huge gaps of hang. So this movie isn't that bad. It's not, uh, what the fuck was that not, movie called? <laughs> Satanica? Dan, it's not Danzig bad, uh, yeah. but but there are but it does make it drag. And if this is a two hour long movie, then that definitely uh, explains maybe why. that's why it's two hours. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So yeah, you know, and with you being an editor, you're gonna notice all that kind of stuff. Yeah, well, was, and, I mean, and the fights were edited pretty well for the I most part. So. The fights were edited pretty they, well, and I they moved they pretty quick. Well, too, I thought the angles were great for the fight yeah, scenes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They nailed a lot of that stuff. Mm -hmm. It was the, and, I, and that's why I wonder uh, how much, uh, 
you know, these guys maybe delved into more stunt related. Maybe they're more wrestling. Yeah, they might be wrestling guys, guys. <laughs> that kind of just wanted to do a movie, and so that's why the fights looked a little better. Um, yeah, I was yeah. very, very impressed with the fights. Yeah, yeah, the fights were great. Sean Roberts does a great job. We'll talk about the actors real quick. Sean Roberts, now you recognize him from, uh, he was uh, Resident Evil's Wesker. And uh, it looks like he's put on a lot of muscle since being Wesker because he, he seems definitely beefier. Oh, he's, yeah, and, uh, absolutely. He's pretty jacked. He like uh, as Wesker, he was in like a suit and he had the glasses and he seemed a little taller and thinner in Resident Evil. But uh, but yeah, he does a really good a job in this one is Tom O'Bannon. Uh, we have Maya Misayevich as Grace, the precocious ten year old, and she wasn't bad. She's I, I don't know how much stuff she's done. We can we can take a quick look. I I really liked the way that she did her acting, and I, I'm sure the way that her character's written was a part of it. But like she's a very like genuine kid character. Like I've seen plenty of movies where they give very adult lines and and words to younger kids, and they they basically write like an adult character and just kind of throw it onto a kid. But I felt like with her, she she just she, she really felt like a kid, you know, yes. with just the way that she is and her being naive, you know, things like that. She was just a well written child character. I thought. Yeah, and she has done a ton, not a ton, but she's done 26, 27 movies, 27 things she's been in. And she was on The Boys TV series. If you watch The Boys, she played young Starlight. And Starlight is the main superhero girl from The Boys. I know you don't watch it, so I, have no I will idea fill you in. <laughs> the, the Boys is a superhero movie, but it's like the dark side of superheroes. It's like, what if Superman was really a fucking prick behind the scenes and like killed people and didn't give a shit about people. He was just keeping up appearances. So these superheroes are all drug addicts. They're womanizers. They're shitty, just terrible fucking people. And uh, Starlight is like the new recruit who we kind of join uh, the, the, the Legion or whatever you want of the super friends, whatever the mm -hmm. you name know, would be through her. She gets recruited at the beginning and it's all like publicity. They talk about how it's all publicity and stuff too and spin. So, uh, but yeah, this girl played young starlight. So she played the young version of the star of the show. That's, That's pretty, cool. pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. So she's been in a bunch of stuff. Uh, seven veils. Another one came out 2023. Um, Unforgettable Christmas, Christmas in Big Sky Countries, and a couple Christmas movies. <clears throat> she voiced a couple Snoopy shows. Ooh, very cool. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah, that's very good. Good for her. She's done a lot of Snoopy stuff. Yeah, she's done a lot of voiceover <laughs> stuff. So very good. That's very cool. Uh, Joelle Farrow played Phoebe, the girlfriend, and she was good enough. Uh, Tara Spencer Nairn though plays the Barb. Barb the mom oh, and man. God, she was like over the top. <laughs> she was so yeah. over the top. When she did the, oh my well. God! Like, uh, and, and we, yeah, we can't spoil anything with her. But yes, she fucking woo. Okay. <laughs> uh, Kelly Penner played Mike, and I just I hated him too. I was like, oh, he's like the he's yeah, like we... your typical uh, hipster college. Dick. He's, he is a dick. <laughs> He's a total dick. We don't yeah, even yeah, see yeah. him for that long in the movie. Yeah. Uh, you had uh, Michael Thoreau as Gil. He was okay. Uh, some Samantha Help, Christine. That's the girlfriend. Uh, more importantly, though, we had this Jesse Buck dude who was Bernie, who uh, who was like the goofy cult guy who had the kitchen oh, oh, fight scene. Him. He's the kitchen he fight the scene guy. He was, he yeah. was the best. He just had the best facial expressions. And like, Most his, of his was like <laughs> so over the top campy. And he was so great. Was awesome. Yeah, yeah. He's really good. Really good practical it really makeup makes and his stuff. His character, he looks iconic. The practical stuff in this is really good. It definitely, uh, there's uh, the special effects I was very impressed with. Yeah. Being someone who's very interested in blood and gore and special effects, I'm always paying attention to that stuff and i was very very impressed with the blood especially yeah i love how the blood looks yeah the blood looks really good they had some really good kills in here and uh we call it? uh oh also we can't forget uh d snyder too of finishing up the very important, uh, <laughs> very important very to get important. to to get to d snyder here finishing up our cast list uh there's some other people but but others of the only other of note is d snyder who uh who is the voice of this uh 
disembodied head. And, <laughs> and I am, I'm just in love with it. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's a great, <laughs> it's hilarious. And you can tell right away it's D. It's, ah, I don't want to give the line away. Well, they showed it we'll in get the trailer. To it. Oh, that's right, they, they did, did, they did. Yeah. yeah, the feed me line is in the trailer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. So, I don't know if I want to say. But. <laughs> yeah, if you watch the trailer, it's in there. Uh, so yeah, uh, cast and crew were solid. Everybody's, I mean, again, these guys aren't going to win awards. This is some campy stuff. Um, it's fun. It's eighties. It's nine, you know, eighties, nineties kind of, uh, cheese factor. <laughs> totally. Uh, There's, soundtrack was good. Like yeah, the music so. was the really music good was in good. there again. Like the, the, you know, there was some, there was some stuff that was just a little, you know, whatever, silly. There were I, there were parts where I should say, um, again, there would be parts where, and, and this maybe falls on the writing, where there would be some banter back and forth, and I'm just like, eh, they wouldn't really talk too much right here. They'd be more just like, if, if there was an intruder in my house and I had to protect a little girl, I might not banter so much back and forth yeah, with them. You he, know what I mean? Yeah, quite was, a bit to say. Yeah, and they're both yeah, just yeah, kind of yeah. sitting there talking. And, and, yeah, 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 it's, yeah. it's unrealistic. Like, okay, that's like, a little... They're trying to add to it. Right, like, right, right. That they're trying to add like to an effect but. right but but and, and again now again with the right editing you m could be able to pull that off if yeah. you're going to sit there and have banner and then have an extra one two almost three seconds of dead space before you cut to the other guy that's having the banner and and, and then he fucking says something then then it's going to be like then it, it definitely feels like ah this is taking too long come on what the fuck like if he were to if if he were to be like uh, who the fuck are you? Uh, I'm here for the girl. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Then, okay, cool. That but that's sense. not the way yeah. it was edited together. No, that was it, like it that was like the biggest problem with this movie. It's a shame. I, I feel like they uh, they did a lot of really good stuff here, um, but but the editing really was was off on it, man. I really felt like the editing could have been could have been so much tighter and do this movie more justice. Um, but so let's just give our uh, let's let's wrap up our first takes here and give our uh thumbs up thumbs down would you you know our final thoughts spoiler free because we're, get ready we're going to jump to spoilers if you watch this one and you want to talk spoilers hang in there we're about to get there and if you haven't seen it you don't want anything spoiled um not that there's like crazy stuff to spoil it's a wrestling movie it's a slasher it's you know they showed a lot of stuff in the trailer the trailer like, gives a lot of yeah, yeah, a yeah. lot of stuff away in the trailer so after watching that, we could say quite a bit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but feel free to hang out even if you haven't watched it, if you don't mind a little bit of uh, spoilery talk afterwards. But we're going to wrap up our uh, our non-spoiler portion of the review now. And uh, ladies first. Um, I, I would give it a thumbs up. I would recommend it, um, especially for just how, how goofy things can be sometimes. Like, it's definitely... Um, pretty funny, really gory. The fights are awesome if you like action. Um, but yeah, it, for me, it was a one and done. But I would definitely recommend it regardless. It's definitely worth the watch. I think so. Yeah, uh, I'm going to agree. I would also recommend watching it. I, uh, um, again, I, I, I feel like the editing didn't do these guys any any favors by because uh, you, you there might have been. Um, a much better movie here, a much shorter movie. And, and I just feel like sometimes, and again, this is a, like one of the reviewers said, it was bogged down by a lot of exposition and, um, you know, uh, like the, I, f I feel like one of the problems as a, as a first time filmmaker, and maybe these guys edited this themselves, um, is you don't know what to cut. You, you leave too much in. You really need to go back and, and really be honest with yourself when you get to the editing portion of something and say, okay, does this really serve purpose to the story and moving the story ahead or is this just slowing it down? Does this really help what we're trying to do? Is this worth putting in here and, take, and putting this and taking this or, 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 or does the movie make just as much sense or does this scene make just as much sense and I take this out? Because if you could take it out, you might not need it. You probably don't need it, I would say. And there was stuff in here that we def definitely a lot of stuff in here we didn't need. So I feel like, uh, again, it makes sense seeing that these guys were like first time writer. Uh, 
only directed a few things so far. Like these guys are are, are rel- relatively new at this thing. So so editing your material down, learning to be uh, unbiased because it's your baby. So of course you want it all in there. You want you know it all I mean? to be in there. You don't want to miss out on anything. Like it makes total sense. And like I wonder, <laughs> like. Like, um, because the beginning's really, really slow. I wonder, like, halfway through, they're like, hmm, maybe we should cut more scenes out. <laughs> <laughs> What's crazy, though, is if you, when I went back and watched it, I felt like the first, uh, that, that, like, first part was really slow, too. But when I was clicking through to, to catch up to where I was, I finished off, mm-hmm. it was only, like, 15, 20 minutes in when we started getting him and the fucking, uh, at, at the house and, like, and stuff was actually starting to roll. I was like, wow, Really? That was only 20 minutes that like that like opening like intro eternity. it took so long yeah 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 it was like it wow like forever so I, I really feel like this movie if you cut a half an hour out of this movie between a lot of the ec- extra fucking uh non-necessary exposition and and a lot of the end uh, of of takes end of shots where it just kind of like hangs on the actors for like a second or two too long, you could easily trim this up and make this a way better movie. I think it's a way more enjoyable and way more fun movie if you take out. There's a lot in there that could come out, I feel like. So I don't know. That, that's my take. I still recommend watching it. Um, and yeah, especially if you have Screenbox, check it out. Uh, it, it's a fun movie. And if you like wrestling, you'll enjoy it. Um, yeah, there's some cool effects. I give it a thumbs up. Definitely recommend watching it. All right. So with that said, now we are going to break out the shovels and dig deeper. I'm falling into the hole. Oh, no. Falling into the grave as we dig deeper. <laughs> this is the spoiler section, folks. So uh, if you don't want the movie spoiled and you haven't seen Here for Blood yet, we're going to dig in and, and talk a little more details and what we really liked and didn't like about the movie, I guess. Uh, and get to, uh, yeah, more in depth. So in let's depth. do it. You can always pause and come back later after you've watched the movie, or just hang out, man. It's a, it's, it's just a, a fun slasher. So there's not a whole lot to, uh, to spoil that, that wasn't really. shown in the trailer. They showed so much <laughs> in the trailer. Like you could just watch the trailer and be like, yeah, I watched the movie. Yeah. <laughs> So, all right, uh, well, let's start off. So, so the it opens with with um, with that like the crow looking dude killing somebody, killing the girls. That was and it was so quick, and they jump into it so quick. You're just like, wow, what just happened? It, so quick, I don't even remember, remember it. it. I yeah, don't yeah. remember that happening. <laughs> I remember. So that's how, yeah, that's how it started off was with the crow getting. I remember uh, a different start to the movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, with him, and then it jumps to. Uh, the uh, college girl and the college friends right, talking, yeah. right? And they have that whole conversation at the uh, in the cafeteria, I guess, at, in on campus, and that's where we kind of get the dynamic. And even there, the, the the dialogue just took so long; it was just so long. Oh. I, I think I zoned out a lot of yes. the dialogue. Like I don't remember what they were talking about. They were probably just building up to, you know, what's happening next, so you know what's going on. But... Right now, when they started talking about Tom, did they start? cutting back and forth or did they just cut to meet tom later i feel like uh was it like a whole i scene feel with... like honestly i don't even feel like they properly introduced him i feel like she talked about him and then they went to him at his wrestling thing um i i think like and again this could be an editing thing and maybe they didn't even think of this but and maybe they did i maybe they did it and i just don't remember it but perfect thing it would have been to have them at the table the girlfriend and them talking at the table and then meanwhile cutting back and forth to tom as these wrestling and fucking and that then, would be cool that would know, be a cool intro that would be they're talking about him in the negative like they don't like him she's like building him up and then mm-hmm. everything she's saying and then he's and then we're cutting to him like kicking ass in the ring like we saw in the next scene instead of having two like separate it. scenes make it one scene where we're jumping back and forth and we're kind of meeting everybody at once might have just make things flow a little bit I, I don't think they did it but uh that's just my two cents that's how i would have done yeah it. no I, I don't think it I don't think they blended it that well. I don't think they did either. <laughs> I, I don't Real quick, we had a couple of people checking in. Jose Blanco checked in. Anthony Noble. Michael McDonald and SP Sosma. Soma. Soma. Sorry, Soma. I, I always pronounce it wrong. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in. We are talking here for blood. 
and we are in the spoilery review part. So uh, get out of here if you don't want it spoiled. Beware. Spoilery. So, uh, all right. So, yeah, we meet Tom, and then she has this whole scheme with the babysitting, and, oh, I need to make money, and that whole thing was like, I, I feel like they spent a lot of time on that, too, which they, I thought so they too. didn't, like, we didn't even need. There was a lot need, of her. Yeah, with her and Ooh, the friends yeah. and, and the talking, and the, and there was a whole lot of them talking about that. I need to name that, and they came up with this whole plan, and then she comes to Tom, and she's explaining to him, and then, and then, and we hear it all again. And we're like, all right, it's a lot of talking about this plan going on. Okay, we get it. Tom is babysitting. They spent a lot of time talking about how it's weird that a guy's babysitting. They mentioned that like multiple times <laughs> in like one scene too. Like they just keep saying. They just keep, keep saying it's weird. Yeah, like, yeah. I think oh they're God. trying to make a joke out of it. But yeah, yeah. It felt but, like it was lingering. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Again, okay, yeah. You know, especially in a, I don't know, in a, in a world so fucking obsessed with nullifying gender roles. Oh, can't have gender roles. So what's wrong with a guy babysitter, huh? Maybe a guy can, but he keeps having to say like, I'm not a weirdo. I'm not a right, creep. You had to keep saying keep that over I'm not a weirdo. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I also feel like they did build up a lot of uh, the wife character when she was not in the movie much at all. Yeah, like there was this whole thing. Um, like like later really on in the movie, I didn't even I didn't even catch it till later. Oh, yeah, we'll get there because we haven't even gotten to that whole section yet. All right, so Tom's going to rest. Uh, Tom's gonna he's going to babysit. So he shows up. Him and the dude, uh, the, the the like white dude with the you know white Jufro. He's they're talking, and he's like, "Yeah, uh, hey, you're not weirdo. Okay, he's a little weird dude." And of course, we got the whole weird weird. Uh, then they come in, and uh, yeah, we meet the girl, we meet Grace, typical kid, just interested in their video games, and uh, and yeah, they they just tells him to eat the cookies. The cookies she tried, they didn't. It I, was. I it kept was, thinking like they kept showing the cookies, and I was like, "Something's up with the cookies." But then nothing ever came of it. And then she says something later. Mm -hmm. You were supposed to eat the cookies, and I was like, "Oh." That cookies. makes a lot of sense. Yeah, like she mentioned, like, "Oh, I have a cookie." Like she mentions that once. It's very subtle, mm -hmm. but they do show them a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so <clears throat> it was like a visual kind of. Mm -hmm. Kind All right, so they uh, so what do we get then? We had uh, we're not gonna go we don't have to go blow by blow in the movie, but uh, Tom's babysitting. Things are going okay. They start to hear something in the uh, attic, right? Right. I think. Oh that's no, they order the pizza. Oh right, right. They the order pizza the pizza. Happened first. Oh, the man. pizza happens oh, first, oh, oh, and the pizza oh. guy shows up. That was a fun scene though, too. I dug the pizza guy. He was great because the pizza guy recognizes. Tom. He's like, "You're Tom O'Brien." Oh man, that's me, my friend. Da, da, da. Can I get a selfie? And he's showing him his. He's like, "Dude, I've been working. I've been working with a bunch of dudes." And it's like, and, and and you can tell Tom's just like, "Oh yeah, it's cool." It's like it's like making his night. That whole scene was fun, man. And I was like, "Oh man!" And then as soon as he walks out, I was like, "The pizza man's fucking dead." God damn I it! I was so sad. <laughs> <laughs> the pizza man's dead. Damn it! I knew he was coming, and I knew I was like, ah. And he gets to, the, he makes it all the way to the car, and that's when I was like, oh yeah, he's in the car. Yep. Uh, and that was a good little spray, spray oh, out good. all over yeah, the fucking. Was, uh, like one thing about this movie is like the blood is super gooey. Like it's yeah. it looks gooey and sticky and it's stringy and it's like almost like almost like you melted down Jello and like <laughs> spread it. You know. <laughs> Yeah, it was a it was a good it was, it was a good consistency. Yeah, it was, it was, it was gross. It was I loved it. It had a it had a, a thick viscosity to it. Yeah, so, like uh, all the blood was just like ooh, it was gooey. <laughs> um, yeah, so we get uh, so we get that kill. Uh, that was a good one. But Tom doesn't know it yet. Like he, they don't even know that. Oh that yeah, they this have is no going idea. On. So, but then they hear. Uh, the banging, or, or he and he goes up and asks if she did it. She's like, "No, nah, I didn't hear nothing." And he's about to go up into this into the uh, attic at one point, and I think she comes out and wants, and that's when she wants something to eat. Oh, that's when they go order the pizza. Oh, yes. that's right. And then that's when there's a the point pizza. where they're so there is the bang to, together. Yeah, and yeah, maybe that's, that's when later. they hear it. Well, there's the bang is earlier. He goes up and thinks that she did it. She says no. He's about to go check the ceiling. Uh, the the attic and mm -hmm. she comes out and says I'm hungry and then he says oh go have oh, a cookie okay. and she's like no we got to order pizza so uh, that's when we get that and uh, that screen's frozen right now but we're still good in life so we're just gonna keep talking yeah, we're this still one. good gonna keep talking about it uh, Anna checking in hi Anna hi Anna hi Maddie and hi. hi Anna thanks for tuning in um, 
all right so we get uh so yeah he uh, we get the the pizza guy gets killed and we get that then we have um well, then we meet the uh, what's his name guy, the upside down face guy. Uh, he's the first one. He's that the we first meet. one, the upside think, down mask. Isn't she playing games and like and he, he like taps her on the head or something? He like, he like creeps up. in behind her and she like looks up like this and he's wearing the upside down mask, so it looks right side up to right, her. Right, so his mask has a face upside down like on his forehead. Yeah. So that was a really cool introduction yeah, yeah. shot for him, especially because you look at it and you're like, what the fuck is that? Yeah. <laughs> uh, so yeah, that was a cool little thing. So she screams. And uh, he is, he's, that's, no, he turns around, he's in the kitchen at that point, and that's when we get the first fight with the goofy guy. That's when oh, we get the fight right. scene in the kitchen. Oh, okay. it's The goofy guy isn't the guy with the upside down mask. The no, upside down mask is the other guy. He takes his mask off really early on. I don't even yeah, remember. Yeah, the goofy guy mask. takes his mask off or he gets it broken. Yeah, yeah, he gets it broken. Yeah, I think yeah, it's broken, broken and then you just see his face for the rest of the movie. Yeah, so he loses his mask. We have this cool fight scene in the kitchen. And again, this is where there's a little banner back and forth uh, where that kind of hangs and lingers a little too long on everybody. But once the fight begins, that's cut pretty well together and, uh, and we get a good amount of. Uh, of brutality and violence and uh he throws the oh that's what it is he throws the water the boiling water from the tea onto her uh onto the guy's face and he takes his mask off because his face is all oh because it's yeah, oh. yeah yeah and he had that big boil on his face and uh, oh that's right and then oh yeah and it like, like it like opens yeah and yeah this, like, so gross i was like out. ah it was so gross yeah yeah Oh, it was fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> so then, uh, yeah, so then the, the whole thing with the bird, he burns his face on the range top. They have the right. electric stove. So it's got that coil. That coil. To it. Yeah. So, so he he's gets got him. that burn mark on his face for the whole movie. Yeah. So that's and where we get it. Fucking awesome. And yep. he, he was an awesome character. He yeah, was he super was a, funny. A funny actor, super uh, animated, ah, screaming. Yeah, he was like a cartoon. Yeah, he totally <laughs> was. He was he was like the fun, goofy comic relief villain. Uh, you know, he's like somebody's little brother who's an idiot, but you gotta have him tag along. <laughs> I, I just love that like throughout the movie, you just like they cut back to him every once in a while just to see what he's doing yeah, yeah, and yeah. he's usually like he's walking around just screaming about his face hurting like. <laughs> well at one point they she throws hand sanitizer on him because oh, he's, right. he's coming he's up like, to get ah! them so yeah <laughs> uh, 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 so they get the invasion they're breaking in and uh, and tom fights them all off he uh he bashes the dude uh well he burns the guy's face and he runs out of the house he chases him out he goes upstairs to get to save the girl and beats up the dude in the upside down mask and ties him up with a. That's right. Yeah, he ties a, him up. I forgot with about With extension that. cord and then goes downstairs. Now they're trying to call, but he doesn't have his cell phone, right? I don't think so. And she doesn't have a cell phone. Mm -hmm. And uh, <clears throat> the place is in like the middle of nowhere, as we should also mention. So there's no neighbors or anything like that. Um, he. Where are we then? Uh, has the guy tied up? Oh, well, then the girlfriend, oh, he loses his phone to the guy. Um, the other guy gets his phone. That's what happens. And the oh, girlfriend right. texts that yeah. she's getting ready to be on her way. And he's like, okay, hurry, see you soon. Oh, that's right. Oh, I forgot about that. Yeah. So then the girlfriend shows up now. Tom is like waiting it out, him and the girl. He's been like cut. He's, you know, fixed himself up. And they're barricaded in the house. And uh I think also at this time he goes up into the attic and finds uh, the head and like like a whole like uh, sacrifice shrine and all kinds of shit up in the attic. Yeah, which this was one of my qualms with the writing. Like this is one of my qualms because later when the when the when the 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 husband and wife show back up, the parents, the stepdad and the mom show back up. I would be like, I would have questions for them. Wouldn't you be like, how the fuck do you have this whole shit set up in your attic and you don't know about it? I call bullshit. This is you. You guys are doing this. Like, right. They, like, yeah, I, he should have, like, there's so that much out. up there. Like, he, but he's just like, I got to show you something in the attic when they finally come home after all is said and done. Mm. Like, that was one of my biggest, like, yeah, I was like, eh, I would have called the cops first. And then, cause he's like, I'm going to show you something and then we can call the cops. 
he even says it like that. Like, that was like part of it. Yeah, yeah. He's like, right, we got to call the cops. We got to get out of here and call the cops. But I got to show you something in the attic first. <laughs> and he takes Gil, the fucking dude, upstairs. And then, and that's when he stabs him. And he fucking Gil stabs him. And oh we find out God. that's when the big twist comes into play that he's he was in on it the whole time. Um, and there's this whole thing, like the, like the mom and dad are in on it. They're supposed to sacrifice the girl. And that's where it gets all convoluted because you have this whole thing with the, uh, the cult members and this one gold face masked. He's got like the gold uh, repair stuff, like a like like Chinese uh, pottery yeah, and stuff. Yeah, like when if you they break like a it. bowl, they they'll repair it with gold, so it has like a gold seam wherever the the breaks are. That's how his mask was. Yeah, and it was which very was cool, very very cool. Like he very was a cool really cool, like powerful kind of character. He the designs cool. on all the masks were really good. They were all very very well uh, the done. characters yeah, were well good. Designed. Um, so, and, and and we have miscellaneous. And we're not going to go through every kill. There were some good kills. Uh, who else? Oh, one of the fun parts though was seeing uh, the, the the hipster dude die. Like that, yeah. at the very when when the girlfriend first shows up, when the girlfriend finally shows up, the door is locked and she pulls up and they're like, "Oh, the pizza car's still here." And she's got her, her girlfriend and the girlfriend's boyfriend that we met right, at the they beginning. Were, they were dropping her off, right? But they're like, "Oh yeah," she's like, "Oh, come on in and say hi to Tom." And uh, the girlfriend wants to go go in and say hi. No, and the guy hi. hates. Oh, I don't want to say hi to Tom anyway. Oh, blah blah blah. So. They go to the door, and while they're at the door, they're, they're, they're like knocking, and Tom's not answering. She's like, I'll just text him. So she texts him, and she gets a text back, and it says, boo. And she looks at it, and she's like, boo. And she turns around, and there's uh, uh, face, burn face dude. Mm. There's burn face guy, and that's when he like, uh, grabs her. And she starts screaming, and he's got the knife, and he's like threatening her. And the girlfriend's like, oh, my God, Mike, do something, do something. And he's like, yeah, yeah, I'll do something. And he runs away. He runs, he runs away to the, the fucking car. car. <laughs> and he's like, get in the car. We're later. He's like, like beeping I, for his girlfriend. Get in the car. Get in the car. We have to leave. Get out of here. I thought he was going to leave. I right? was like, holy I shit. <laughs> <laughs> but at the same time, he also knew the crow was in the car waiting for him because you kind of saw the crow walking around and he's yeah, kind of like lurking yeah. in the in the mist at this point. So the crow killer is like in the car waiting. Make short work of Tom. Everybody was, oh no, that's right. He he like slices his neck and then uh, it sprays. We get that again. And then the door opens and, Tom, and not, uh, Mike is his name, right? And he's like, He's like staggering out, and she and they're on the door, and he's they're trying to get the girlfriend, and he's like, no, no, he's still alive. We gotta help him. We gotta help him, and he's still alive. And they're looking back, and now the dude's like crawling on the ground, and the crow's on top of the back, and he's like, boom, right in his back with the knife. Oh, and she's yeah, like, he's no, just... wait, he's still alive, and he's like, where, 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 where? and blood's flying everywhere, and he's like, ah, his blood, and then finally you see like just like, Duh. and then and Tom's like, yeah, he's definitely dead now. Let's go. <laughs> that was hilarious. <laughs> he's getting stabbed to death. No, he's still alive. Wait, he's still, he's still got hope. <laughs> so yeah, that was a really funny bit. Uh, there were some funny bits like that in there. And, and so they finally get inside. This was funny too. They get inside and I'm like, what the hell's going on? What the hell's going on? And he's like, I think we're under attack by sex perverts. <laughs> and I'm just like, what the fuck? <laughs> Some of the shit that he said is so funny. And then later on, like, like a half an hour, 40 minutes later, he's like, I'm starting to think these aren't sex perverts. <laughs> it, it, it almost feels out of character when he says these things, but I, I didn't even care. Because right, he doesn't so seem funny. that he doesn't seem that goofy. Like, no, but then he, he just like says a, very, a couple like, goofy things. And they no were pretty, kind of dude. Like, he seemed pretty smart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He seemed kind of smart. And then uh, he's saying this like <laughs> super goofy one-liners, and I'm just like, this is a total switch of character. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, there was there was a couple of funny bits, funny funny lines in there. Um, yeah, that was good. Uh, yeah, good, that, good. I, I liked it. I Still thought it was now. funny. The sex perverts thing was good. Uh, I mean, he has he has quite a few more in there. He was good. He was he actually he said, did a really good. Uh, everything was funny. <laughs> You'll find out when you watch the movie. <laughs> yeah, there's uh, what else? Well, yeah, we should talk about D. Snyder. Um, feed me, feed me. It's just a little fucking head. He's just a little. It's like a skull with head like one too. Eyeball. He's got one eye, and, and he's adorable. Mouth's all gooey, and oh yeah, uh, he's got the gooey blood. He's a total like hand puppet in his mouth. He's like yeah. a latex puppet, uh -huh. and. He is adorable. He yeah, is yeah. precious. <laughs> so, and he plays into the somehow plays into the whole uh, ritual that they have to yeah, do. They, like, 
beat people to him. Yeah, so the whole thing, well, yeah, he eats that. And that was all, like, even that, when they pushed him into the brain and the, and the crow died, the crow guy died yeah, by having his brain eaten. That yeah, was so, like, like anticlimactic, though. I was like, and dude, he was like... like a- like a super I know he was character. like he, he was, was so, fucking dude, scary. He was like the main killer through the whole thing. And, and then just like this unceremonious death. Like like Tom didn't even Tom got his ass kicked and then he uh and and then he just happens to like he like trips him or knocks him into the thing and the thing starts eating his brains. Yeah, he he like tripped him or something like that. He somehow he got his head like right to Yeah, where yeah, the and skull of course was. he just couldn't get away. The skull was biting on him. He couldn't he just He was like get biting out his of hair. There, he could have totally gotten away. Yeah, yeah, some of that stuff was a little yeah, but uh you know, I'm yeah, trying was, I'm trying to have fun with it. It was still fun regardless. Yeah, yeah, exactly, but, exactly. You have fun I, with it, but but then he gets up and he's like, "Oh, did you see the scalp is missing." See, and it was like, just like the perfectly brains. rounded top. Not at all where the skull was chewing on his head. There's no bite marks There's, on the brain. No, not even on no, no bite marks on the brain. It was just like he was completely scalped, just like it's lifted like the top ate, piece like, right off. The skin. It was like a perfect the- circle. There was no, it wasn't even bitten. It was like a, it was like somebody sawed off the top of the skull it and just lifted it off. Clean. And when you see him chewing on it, he's chewing on like the back of his head. There's nothing, it's yeah. all still intact. It's just like a perfect circle on the top of his head just lifted off. It was so that was that was, it was pretty very bad. goofy. <laughs> but I do wish that he, yeah, I, I wish that he had a more epic death because he was a very scary. He, did, he deserved he a better. I deserved a better death. Yeah. He was fun to watch. And they gave that big meat dude the big death, the big fight scene outside, which was okay. But and like you see, he's like a background character. Yeah, he has so many lines. And by like his whole fight scene, like I got so like tired a, of hearing him grunt. He's just I was like, like a oh wild my god! Animal. Yeah, yeah. But he was weird. always grunting, like nonstop. I was like, all right, enough grunting, dude. <laughs> like, I mean, even people that you know, like even animals don't grunt that much. You're over grunting. <laughs> so, uh, all right, let's jump to the end. How did you feel about the ending? Do you remember the ending? <laughs> so the ending, we find out mom and dad are in on it. They kill the right. fucking uh, dad. And they wanted to kill. Well, no, they mention the uh, well, yeah. They have to kill. So the whole thing is that these they're granted unlimited power by these demons who they have to sacrifice beautiful women to, and that's the right. Whole that thing. was their whole thing. So like sacrifice they wanted they wanted Tom's girlfriend, who's normally the babysitter, mm-hmm. um, and they were going to sacrifice the kid as well. But I think the main um sacrifice was her because she was like a pretty girl so mm-hmm. um and they were like oh we're doing this because we like you and you know they they wanted to take her along on their adventures in the afterlife <laughs> yeah <and> the <laughs> mom is totally o- the mom is totally over the top with this shit oh, ah! so um and then uh we had the, the the main bad guy is yeah the guy in the gold mask he gets kicked into. They have this. There's this big portal. It's oh, this, yeah, like this big closet. Portal. It's this big closet with Isn't a big it head in the on barn? it. It's in the barn. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, man, who did you build this here? Did you move this? Yeah, here? right. Why is, this here? Why is this demonic door in your barn? They're prepared. They're ready for it because the parents were in on it. See, that's the whole thing. That's why Tom was like, I gotta show you this thing upstairs. Not even. Not, it never not dawned on like you, Tom, about- that it might be them. That the parents are in on this whole fucking thing. This is all a setup. Come on, Tom. Uh, but uh, but yeah. Uh, so we get the bed, big bed at the end, and the doors open, and and they're, they they got to toss the girlfriend, and Tom's trying to stop them, and uh, and the mom's there, and he's like, oh, so we need a sacrifice, or we need a, you know a, a a tithe, or all of the, or or they're gonna destroy everything. They're gonna come through the portal and destroy everything. And, oh, it just has to be any old sacrifice. So then let's give them you. A boop. And he boops him into the fucking thing. He got booped. And the, and the big bad black guy goes flying backwards. Oh, he gets booped into the fucking <laughs> interdimensional portal and uh, and explodes, I guess, or some shit. Well, he comes back, remember? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. He comes back. He comes back in like a, like right. a demon in a form. a demon form. Which was yep. very cool makeup, by the way. Really yeah. cool. He had like yellow contacts, and he had like symbols car- carved like into his face and stuff. Yeah, and now, really, the, really and now cool. the gold was in his skin. Yeah, it was in his skin, um, and he had gold on the collar. Like so, he wore like a suit, and he had like gold, gold pieces in his yeah. collar too. Yeah, so, it was so there's really, a lot of really gold. Cool. Yeah, <laughs> he, he was a really cool character. I loved his, his design, and yeah, yeah he, he was, was fun. and he was like that you know, big bad boss kind of character. Mm-hmm. Like you're almost kind of rooting for him. He's cool. <laughs> yeah. 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 He was fun and, uh, acting wasn't too bad. He was good enough. Uh, so then he comes back and, and how the fuck did they kill him? 
I even forget how they killed him. I don't remember. I, it was so like. Did they use the head? Because they destroyed the head, remember? Yeah, he, he chops the head at one point. No, they put the head. They used the head it. to kill the meat guy. Or wait, they were. He was. Wait, didn't he like try to make a deal with them? He was like, oh, if you. Because he's like, I'm going to destroy the head. And then. No, that was earlier. That, that was, was earlier. earlier. Yeah, and he still okay. tried to destroy the head. And then the head. The girl. And then he goes into the portal. Beat the meat girl. Uh, yeah. The girl beat. Yeah. Put the meat, beat the meat guy with the head. God, that sounds awful. <laughs> the 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 meat, the big dude was choking Tom, and Tom's like, "Get the head!" And the little girl grabs the fucking head and puts yeah. it on the guy, and it eats his fucking. Neck. Oh, that's right. And that's how the, that's, that's where that's that. the last we see the head. I'm pretty sure. I think so. And and like he he like like he didn't smash it. He like put. Well, there like was a, a big severed in the top of him. Yeah, I think they used like an axe or something yeah, on yeah. it. And he but was he was still, still alive. alive. Yeah, like, yeah. That didn't affect good. him at all. You can't kill D. Snyder that bad, that, that easily. Yeah, no, it's gonna take more than than an action, <laughs> <wound>, guys. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. So then I, 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 they didn't kill him any way special. I was just like, okay, that's the end. And then the mom says something, and they punch the mom, and uh, and everybody lives yeah. happily ever after. I, I don't remember the end. <laughs> Like I, it must have not been that great because I. Yeah, don't, I, don't I remember, remember it wasn't very good. I remember it was all. It didn't tie I remember it together D. very Snyder. well. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, all right. Well, yeah, that's gonna do it then. Final thoughts on this one. Um, we just we, we dug out a, a few more. Uh, 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 we didn't we didn't go too much further, but. No, um, well, we we talked a little more in depth about some stuff. We talked. Yeah. There was some more. Uh, there were some good jokes in there, but again, I feel like the ending was very forgettable. Uh, Again, like overall, uh, it's it's probably just a one-time watch, just because it was so like plodding at points. It was so slow, especially if it's at, like a two-hour runtime. Jesus, I know I couldn't believe that was two hours. Yeah, well, that explains why we that were getting we now so we tired. know why, and I yeah. think it's also crazy how much uh, even like cutting two seconds out of a scene can make a huge difference in a movie. Yeah, totally. It's it's crazy how little you have to do to make a huge difference. Yeah, no, editing's big. This is this movie's a perfect example. Perfect example of of how a tight edit or, or if you have a loose edit, it's, it can really make or break. You know, you uh, can totally movie. watch this movie to like figure out what not to do with editing. Like you can examine <laughs> this movie and kind of learn from it. Honestly, certain parts, yeah. The fight scenes were edited together well. They I seemed so to flow too. together. It seemed like he knew where he was going with those. It seemed like on the dialogue, he didn't know where he should be making his cuts, and uh, that was the big problem. There was too much space, and, mm -hmm. and it wound up there and all that all that space adds up to two fucking hours so uh <laughs> yeah again bottom line i i i dug it i uh i recommend watching it once but there was a uh, you know it's first time filmmakers and and i i will look they did a good enough job that i'll watch the next thing that they put out um i'll be curious to see how they do on the next one so uh yeah i i give them a thumbs up and and, and they really tried to tackle a lot they did succeed but they all you know there was a lot kind of failed as well so uh but still worth a watch definitely definitely worth a watch yeah i i agree i i agree with watching it once and being done with it i probably wouldn't go back to it unless i wanted to examine something or or like learn from it or remember the ending you know, or remember the ending <laughs> go back and I might go back ending. Ending. <laughs> i'm curious now like how the fuck does it end we're gonna go watch the yeah ending you don't again. remember either uh, you know if you don't remember then it must have been really boring. Yeah, he comes out of there, and, and then I don't remember. I don't, how they it destroyed wasn't the whole epic thing. at all. No, I mean, yeah, it, was it was a very anti. It was an anticlimactic ending. But uh, yeah, I would say you know watch it once. I, I think it was a fun movie. It's you know it's entertaining. It held my interest. But yes, it was very slow, especially in the beginning. Um, and I agree about the editing. I feel like they could have cut it up a little bit better. But yeah, I mean, I for me, the thing that really stands out to me is is the special effects and the gore and the blood. We didn't even mention uh, when Tom gets stabbed in the foot. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Was that good... was some of the goopiest, <laughs> reddest yeah, blood yeah. coming out of his shoe. Oh my gosh! Like I, I just, I love the consistency consistency of the blood, and I will watch the movie just for that and for D. Snyder because <laughs> I, I love D. Snyder, even though his character had one line and he just kept That's saying, "Feed me," <laughs> and he's just, he's adorable. I would watch it just, just for that. But mm -hmm. it is a fun movie, cool action, cool gore, cool characters, really great character design. Um, but yes, it has it has its flaws. But I would say, yeah, give it a watch. All right, well there you have it. 
Uh, one more pet peeve I'll throw in because you just reminded me of it. Uh, Tom gets stabbed in the foot. Tom gets his arm sliced. Tom gets a gut stab. Yeah, but Tom's still able to wrestle like a motherfucker through the whole goddamn movie. He hasn't fucking missed a step. So uh, his foot gets so, stabbed. He goes, "Ow!" <laughs> 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 so uh yeah you know I, I i call out scream for shit like that i gotta call out this movie too the gut shot oh yikes but uh, all right that's gonna do it for this episode of Densville horror talk thanks to maddie meek for joining me yeah you're welcome thank you guys for tuning in and uh yeah we'll uh feel free to throw some comments in there what you thought of the movie we'll always check them out and come back and maybe we'll read them next time we jump on live before we uh before we get into our next review so uh all right that's gonna do it Boo believers. Until next time. Bye. <laughs> Stay spooky. I'm going to copy you. Stay spooky. No, gotta, you got to come up with your own yet. catchphrase. So I'm going to steal for now. I you need your own catchphrase. I don't have one yet. <laughs> <laughs> All right, y'all. Thanks for tuning in. Anna, TJ, Jose, Anthony, everybody. Appreciate <laughs> it. Have a good night. See you guys tomorrow for Daily Booze Live. Bye, guys.